you guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 8. This just premiered right now, and we got to freak out about that ending. We need to break down everything that happened in this episode. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was very good. You know, for a lot of different reasons. Like, at the end, it was great because of the twist ending to do with Barry, Iris, and Speed Force Nora. But then, the whole rest of the episode was really good for the Frost stuff. And, obviously, you kind of go back and forth because you have the opposition against Frost. And, like, they're totally against them and you kind of hate Kramer. I mean, you're supposed to. So, it was a good episode. And, at the start, I mean, I was liking it. But, I wasn't liking it as much as, like, say, some of the recent episodes of The Flash. However, by the end, with that twist ending, I mean, it just shot up straight away. Because, that was such a great twist. Even though we were expecting it, it came in a great way that I was not expecting. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this review. So, let's start off chronologically. So, Kramer and Argus at the start proposing a deal. So, we didn't know kind of what was going on there, but later it turned out that she was duplicating, like, the Metacure, and we find out her whole shebang in this episode. Like, she is after all Metahumans, not just Frost. Frost is just, like, the first person that she's going to try and get to. And then she'll try and get to everyone else. But we'll get back to that because there's lots more later in the episode. So in this episode we had the return of the Strength Force aka Fuerza aka Alexa. That is the human version of Fuerza who we meet in this episode. And Fuerza or Alexa is working for a non-profit organization as a human. And so Speed Force Nora confronts her, calls her out, calls her a monster. She's being completely irrational this episode, that being the Speed Force. And you know something is ticking off inside her brain and something else is going on. And, you know, when she is welcoming Fuerza into Star Labs later in the episode, you're like, okay, she's not being legit here. Something else is going on and something else, it does turn out, is going on. But we're going to get to that twist ending very soon. I know I keep on hyping up even in just the first few minutes of the video. However, let's continue with this. So Barry changes his clothes as they go to the site. And he's in his CSI gear, and you also get the Flash coming back later, and that's where you get the confrontation with Speed Force Nora, and also with Fuerza, and Nora reminds Barry of what they did to her, recounting that I still remember how they attacked me and how they were eating me alive. She tries to get through to Barry, but it never quite works because Barry is a hero, and Barry wouldn't stand for any of this, and Iris is really there to back Barry up and his own thoughts because Nora is very pushy, and so she really is rooting towards taking down the forces, and at the start of the episode, even Iris goes as far as saying she isn't so sure because she recounts how, like, the still force was, and, you know, Cisco and Chester's reaction to seeing Dion, and the fact that, you know, they are humans, and they don't even remember these events, so let's move on to the next thing, so we have the trial of Killer Frost, that is the whole big kind of main storyline that goes on apart from the Fuerza stuff in this episode. So Cisco, Caitlin, and Allegra, they all break into CCPD, they get caught by Kramer. It's kind of funny that it was like super handy that she just showed up out of nowhere. And at the same time, I was asking myself like, doesn't Barry work there? Also Joe works there, so why didn't they get them on the case? Because I'm sure there could have been a much easier way to do that. That is just my thoughts that were going through my head, and I wrote down some notes. I was like, hmm, I guess there could have been an easier way than just, like, breaking in with, like, a bunch of random people who don't even work there. Because that is more conspicuous. So they succeed at destroying the Metacure. That's their mission, because the whole thing with the trial is Kramer is trying to force upon the Metacure on Frost. This is her whole shebang, that she wants to go after all the metahumans, and she is using Cisco's cure as a way to take away their powers forcefully. And so that is, like, totally against everything that Team Flash stands for, and everything that they created the cure for, and that's why they try and destroy the cure, which is successful at. However, Argus creates a backup. Like, if Lila was there, and Diggle was there, and they kind of cared about continuity a bit more, Argus wouldn't have done that. I'm just saying. So that is just how I think it would have gone down. Like, they wouldn't have helped at all. However, 
in this episode was seen as more like an organization who was just like backing Kramer because maybe she had some links then. Anyway, let's continue. So you have Nora who confronts Alexa. Nora wants to test her again against her own will. She's been very irrational and she's like, oh, we're gonna use our speed powers and like test her before she even knows. And that's how we're gonna find out if she is Fuerza. And she does get her answers later in the episode. However, that is because Barry reaches into the good of Alexa and she agrees to come to Star Labs to be tested. And that's when all hell breaks loose. Okay, so let's go back. Joe testifies with Frost at the trial, and it's really infuriating how the offense against Frost is so cold, which is kind of ironic if I may point that out myself. And basically they claim that she is the exact same as before, and how she is no better than what she used to be at a certain point. Also, I must add, they kept on doing a couple of shots in the background with that random meta from Season 4. I'm like, really guys? We really didn't need him. That was like the one part in the episode where I was like, okay, really? Like, come on. He's just really insignificant, but I get what he's there for. He's supposed to be like the face of all the other metas, and he has this one line in the episode towards the end that reaffirms that. But anyway, Caitlyn and Frost, they have a very intense talk as Caitlyn's plan is kind of foiled, and you know, Argus has the backup of the Metagear, and it looks really bad for Frost. And so it's finally revealed as Frost sits down with Kramer what her beef is and this is the big thing that kind of shifts the tide of the episode because she reveals that she lost an entire platoon of soldiers she says and talks about like how she hates all metas who pretend to be heroes and that's why she's after Frost and it's not even a personal vendetta against Frost herself but it's against all metas as a whole and by inciting this one act is going to set a precedent for all the metas that come after who maybe aren't necessarily bad anymore or are just metas in general and they were falsely accused. They're going to be losing their powers just because of this one person who wants revenge on this one bad meta who tricked them. And so following this, Frost makes a statement in the court about how being different and how they can't take away someone's powers just because they are different and she reveals how they fear that. Basically going back and claiming everything against what Kramer is trying to do and she submits a request to be sent to prison for life without parole. Which at first you're like, okay, why the hell are you trying to go to prison for life because you're not going to get out of prison. Which obviously is a big thing, however, she is happy when it goes down like this. Even though that means literally she's never going to get out of prison. Obviously we know she probably is going to get out of prison at some point. I mean, it's a TV show after all. But the big thing here is that this goes exactly against what Kramer doesn't want. She gets mad, she kind of steps out of line and is told to cool down and sit back down. And it turns out that Frost's request is actually taken into account and she's not going to be given the Metacure, so Frost is still going to have her powers even though she's going to be sent to prison for life. So it's kind of like a win-lose situation where that she's going to be stuck in prison forever. However, she will have her powers and she's not going to have them taken away. And it sets a precedent for all the Metas who come next. They're not going to be taking their powers away just because they are supposedly on trial for criminal activities. So we have this goodbye scene which has a really cool song over it. It's very slow and it's kind of sad. As Team Flash says bye to Frost for the last time, even though it's without Iris and Barry, it must be noted. And we have this cool dolly zoom shot in the apartment with Caitlin looking all sad at the painting that Frost did. So I thought it was just like a great way to kind of end off this episode and what they were going for. And you have Kramer's last goodbye to Joe, and Joe puts her in check and says, check what saddle line you're on. And I was like, true Joe, this is so right. Because she was veering way over to the other side of the line. Okay, so let's go back to the really kind of mind-bending stuff that happened at the end of the episode that I teased before. So Alexa remembers being so angry when Abracadabra destroyed their site and she's been having these blackouts. So she's terrified that she's Fuerza and she's been taken over. So Barry gets her to realize that she should take the test and so she ends up at Star Labs and she's welcomed by not only Barry but the Speed Force and she's taken into the Speed Lab 
Barry, Iris and Nora, the people in the room, and Nora gives a strange look to Iris and comments on her being the lightning rod to Barry. And so it's kind of like a weird moment, and you're like, hmm, what is going on here? And then you have Alexa transforming into Fuerza whilst doing the test, her eyes turn blue, her face kind of crackles with that lightning energy. And so at this point, Alexa realizes when she goes back to normal that she is Fuerza, and it's right at this point where Nora, aka the Speed Force, goes full psycho. She absorbs Barry's lightning, and Barry tries to stop her, and tries to save Fuerza, however, she's been manipulating Barry all this time, and all she's been after is to try and destroy the forces, and so she doesn't care at this point. You see the lightning, all the colors, they surge within her, and like I said, she absorbs Barry's lightning, they have this kind of standoff where the lightnings collide together, and she literally manipulates and controls them. Obviously, she is the literal speed force, so she's able to control all this lightning, and it's so easy for her. And she blasts that lightning right into Fuerza, and it turns out she kills Fuerza, and that ending had me like, what the hell just happened, Nora? What did you do? So this was something that we were expecting, and we've been theorizing that there was something off with Speed Force Nora for the last few weeks. We kind of guessed that, however the way that it went down wasn't as expected because she turned into a full on psycho with all of the force energy with inside her surging. And she literally goes ahead right in front of Barry and Iris and just kills the strength force. So next episode is going to be heavy on trying to figure out what's going on with the speed force. The speed force, it turns out, is the big bad of the first half of the season. That's pretty much confirmed by this because the forces, they are being attacked by the speed force. And who knows that original attack where she said she'd been attacked by all the forces together. I mean, it's pretty likely that she was the one attacking all of them, because maybe in the past all the forces did exist, however, she kept them at bay, but with her being temporarily killed, that being the Speed Force of course, and with her coming back, that means all the other forces have returned, that's where you got the lightning from in that early episode this season. So she's on a mission to destroy all the forces in order that she can survive, because obviously the Speed Force doesn't want to go away again. However, they are becoming more and more kind of irrational as this all goes on, and it seems like maybe Team Flash is going to have to defeat her and stop her from trying to kill the other forces, because you have to remember, the forces have taken over real humans, and Barry as a superhero, as the Flash, cannot stand for the killing and the murdering of innocents, and that's what she literally just did in this episode right at the end, she just killed Fuerza aka Alexa, her true human form. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this exploration continue, I thought this was an awesome twist. What do you guys think about this? Let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Also subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new, and click here to watch my latest video. Later today, we're going to have a Supergirl review for the new episode that just came out after The Flash. Also, we're going to be having my Flash trailer breakdown and my Supergirl trailer breakdown for the next episodes coming out after. So, stay active, stay tuned for those. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.